Levels of prevention is a five-star topic when it comes to the MDCN examination. That means there's almost a 100% guarantee that you'll have at least one station on that. My name is Dr. Mariam, and in this video, I'm going to be walking you through how you can easily pass your levels of prevention station in the MDCN OSCE. But before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this. Also, if there are other videos that you want to see, let me know in the comment section below. So the format of the levels of prevention in the MDCN OSCE is a little bit different than the conventional. The conventional is usually the primary, secondary and tertiary. But for the MDC and OSCE, the format is a little bit different. The levels of prevention are broken down into five, namely general health promotion, specific protection, early diagnosis and prompt treatment, limiting disability and rehabilitation. So the first two, which are general health promotion and specific protection, fall under primary prevention. And this is usually targeted towards healthy people without the disease. The third level of prevention, which is early diagnosis and prompt treatment, falls under secondary prevention, which is usually targeted towards people with mild forms of the disease. And the last two, which are limiting disability and rehabilitation, fall under tertiary level of prevention, which is usually targeted towards people with the disease who already have complications. So the first level of prevention, which is general health promotion, usually targets the entire population, meaning healthy people without the disease, and it aims to reduce risk factors. It usually focuses on the following public education, so through flyers, seminars, TV and radio shows, through environmental factors like sanitation, sewage disposal, access to sports field in the case of preventing chronic diseases like hypertension and diabetes, for example, through nutritional interventions like healthy eating, through government policies like increasing taxes on fast food joints or on cigarette companies, and through behavioral and lifestyle modification like exercise and smoking cessation. So as you can see, all of the methods used in the general health promotion are to reduce risk factors. The second level of prevention, which is specific protection, targets people who are at an increased risk of the disease and its aim is to decrease developing the disease. Key strategies here include immunization or vaccinations which are very very important, isolation of cases in terms of infections or infestations, use of safety measures like wearing masks, gloves and other personal protective equipment and exposure prophylaxis so this can be pre-exposure prophylaxis like in the case of a person who has a partner that's hiv positive that person can take pre-exposure prophylaxis with drugs to prevent contacting hiv from their partner or it can be post-exposure prophylaxis so for example in the case of somebody who gets a needle prick injury from an hiv positive person the third level of prevention is early diagnosis and prompt treatment this targets people with mild or subclinical forms of the disease that means they have the disease but they're not really exhibiting symptoms and the aim is to prevent progression of the disease key measures here very very important include screening if there's a screening program you need to include it at this level other key strategies include diagnostic tests and then treatment measures this means to be successful at this step you need to know the various diagnosis and treatments of the given cases number four on our levels of prevention is limiting disability this targets people with symptomatic forms of the disease and its aim is to prevent complications. So for this, usually anticipate the most common complications of the case in order to pick them up early and limit as much damage as possible. The last but not the least for our levels of prevention is rehabilitation. This focuses on improving the quality of life as it targets people who have already developed complications from the disease. Key strategies here include counseling, social support, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and psychotherapy. So before we look at some case examples, let's go through some tips that will help you pass the station easily. So for the first level of prevention, which is general health promotion, the first thing you should mention should be public education. It should always be the first on your list. If you get a case that's an infection or infestation, don't forget to include your hand hygiene, public sanitation, and proper sewage disposal. If you get an airborne or droplet-borne case like tuberculosis, always remember to include proper ventilation, avoiding overcrowding and cough etiquette on top of hand hygiene on the other things that we mentioned. For food and waterborne diseases, don't forget to include hand hygiene, proper sewage disposal. And lastly, if you get a chronic disease or a cancer, don't forget your 
behavioral or lifestyle modification like exercise, healthy diet, smoking cessation, and alcohol limitation. Our tip when it comes to the second level of prevention, which is specific protection, is to always remember if there is a vaccine or an immunization, it needs to be number one on your list. Second is if your case is an infective case, you need to include isolation, especially when you're talking about a viral hemorrhagic fever like Lassa or Ebola. Don't forget your personal protective equipments like gloves, masks, gowns, and then lastly, your chemoprophylaxis if available. The tip I have for you for the third level of prevention, which is early diagnosis and prompt treatment is if there is a screening test, remember it also needs to be the first on your list. Then you need to know the various diagnostic tests and treatment for your given case. Tip number four for limiting disability is you need to anticipate complications of such case and then say the diagnosis and management of that. So for example, if you get a case like Lassa fever, one of the complications might be multi-organ failure, specifically the kidneys, and you need to anticipate and then have access to dialysis. And then tip number five for rehabilitation is remember your counseling, your support groups, and your various therapies. So your occupational therapy, physiotherapy, and psychotherapy. So let's look at a few cases that are commonly asked in the MDCN examination. So the first case we'll be looking at will be cervical cancer. So here under general health promotion, what did we say should be first? That's right, always, always public education. So the public needs to be educated about cervical cancer, the modes of transmission, their early symptoms, how it can be diagnosed and the treatment. We can also include promoting safe sex, discouraging multiple sex partners and encouraging abstinence in young girls, all under general health promotion. If you want, you can also include smoking cessation because smoking is one of the risk factors. And remember, our aim in general health promotion is to decrease risk factors. On that specific protection, what did I say should always be first, if available? That's right, a vaccine. So for cervical cancer, we have two types, the Gardasil vaccine and the Cervarex. What's the difference? Well, the Gardasil vaccine covers the four most common types of serotypes. So that's 6 and 11, the ones that cause genital warts, and then 16 and 18, which are responsible for cervical cancer. And then the Cervarex vaccine only covers 16 and 18 serotypes. Then we can also include condom promotion programs under specific protection for cervical cancer. Under our third level of prevention for cervical cancer, which is early diagnosis and prompt treatment, do you remember what I said should always be first if available? That's right, a screening test. So for cervical cancer, the screening test we use is a pap smear. So that should be your number one if you get cervical cancer as your case. You can also include other diagnostic measures like HPV testing, colposcopies. Then you can move on to therapeutic measures like the LETS biopsy, which is large loop excision of the transformation zone, cone biopsy, hysterectomy, and then other treatment measures like chemotherapy and radiotherapy. For our fourth level of prevention, which is limiting disability, like I said, we need to anticipate complications of such scenario. So for example, a complication of cervical cancer can be metastasis. So you can look for those meds using chest x-rays, CT scans, PET scans, and then you can treat complications for example, bleeding, which is a common complication of cervical cancer with transfusions. The last thing for our level of prevention for cervical cancer will be rehabilitation. So here we'll just include our counseling, social support groups, our physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and some patients might need psychotherapy. Let's look at another case like Lassa fever. So Lassa fever is a viral hemorrhagic fever. And the good thing here is that most of the other viral hemorrhagic fevers will have similar things to Lassa fever. So if you kind of know your level of prevention for Lassa fever, you can kind of use it as a hack to get your way through the other viral hemorrhagic fevers. For our first level of prevention, which is general health promotion, remember, number one should be public education. The public needs to know about Lassa fever, how it's transmitted, the early symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it can be treated, and most importantly, how it can be prevented. Other measures you can include here will be environmental hygiene, proper sewage disposal, proper covering of food, so never leave food open, and then avoiding eating bush meat. For our second level of prevention for Lassa fever, which is specific protection, unfortunately there's no vaccine for Lassa fever, but we can isolate suspected or confirmed cases and use our personal protective equipments like gloves, masks, gowns. We can also properly bury or cremate dead bodies and use post-exposure prophylaxis with rifampicin. Under our third level of prevention, which is early diagnosis and prompt treatment, unfortunately, again, for Lassa, there's no screening test, but you can use a diagnostic test like identifying viral DNA, antibodies, or proteins using ELISA. And then you can treat with ribavirin. And then lastly, your supportive measures, because most of the treatment is supportive using rest, 
IV fluids, analgesics, and antipyretics. For our fourth level of prevention for Lassa fever, which will be limiting disability, we need to anticipate complications. For example, Lassa fever is a viral hemorrhagic fever. So from the name hemorrhage, a patient can bleed, right? What do we do when a patient bleeds? Transfuse. That's right. So one of our strategies for limiting disability will have to be transfusion. Another strategy will be ICU care and organ support because these patients tend to go to multi-organ failure in severe disease. Then you can keep your dialysis for renal support and in extreme cases organ transplantation like for liver and kidney and then lastly for our fifth level of prevention for lassa viva which is rehabilitation we'll just again rehash what we used the last time so our counseling our support groups you can use a disease-free guard sometimes you give people disease-free cards so that they can move around they can travel around and then you have your physiotherapy occupational therapy and in some cases psychotherapy because it can be traumatic let's take one more example before we close off our video and our last example will be hypertension so the first level of prevention for hypertension which is general health promotion number one will be our public education number two will bring in some of our nutritional factors like healthy eating and then we'll bring in some environmental factors like access to sporting fields then we'll bring in our lifestyle modification like smoking cessation alcohol moderation and then you can even implement government policies like increasing taxes on fast food joints for our second level of prevention for hypertension which is specific protection again hypertension does not have a vaccine we cannot isolate suspected cases. We cannot use personal protective equipment to prevent hypertension. But guess what we can do? Maintain a healthy BMI. So you can use that as your specific protection for hypertension. For our third level of prevention, which is early diagnosis and prompt treatment, you can include early commencement of blood pressure screening and use of antihypertensives. The fourth level of prevention for hypertension, which will be limiting disability, we need to anticipate the complications of hypertension, which includes stroke, heart disease. So we can include here regular EUCR, chest x-ray, ECG, regular fundoscopy, and then monitoring proteinuria and starting our ACE if it's present. And then lastly, for our fifth level of prevention for hypertension, which is rehabilitation, will include our counseling, social support groups, physiotherapy, speech and language therapy for stroke because occupational therapy and dialysis for CKD. So I've made notes on the most commonly asked cases for the MDCN exam in regards to the level of prevention. I'll make sure to link it in the description below so that you can go to the Dropbox link and you can download it and use it. I have all the examples including malaria, other types of cancer, COVID-19, cholera, which is important because there's been a cholera outbreak recently. It might be worth your while to check up on that. And also there's been an outbreak of monkeypox in the US lately so for your exam it might be worthwhile to check that out i have all that in the notes that i've created so i'll make sure to link it in the description below don't forget to check it after the video make sure you download it and go through them so to close off our video we'll go through how some diseases are transmitted levels of prevention falls under your station for public health so sometimes they might ask you to list examples of for example waterborne diseases or vector borne diseases so examples of waterborne diseases here include your cholera hepatitis a hepatitis e poliomyelitis very important and typhoid fever so for our airborne diseases here will include tuberculosis measles chicken pox shingles and sars Note that droplet borne diseases are not the same as airborne diseases. Airborne diseases are diseases that you can get from inhalation of air. So usually the particles are way smaller. While droplet borne diseases, usually you get them from inhalation of droplets. So the particles are much larger. And diseases like these include the common cold, influenza, COVID-19, diphtheria, meningitis, rubella, and mumps. And then lastly, examples of vector borne diseases include malaria, of course, dengue fever, yellow fever, and chikungunya. So we've reached the end of our video. That's about it for the level of prevention. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot from this video. If you did, please like the video. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'll make sure to answer that. Don't forget to check the description for the PDF version of everything we've spoken about today. Go through that. If you have any questions, again, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Most importantly, if you want more videos like this, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.